And I want to talk to you a little bit about the fundamental change that we're seeing as Microsoft in the market. And these can be categorized by these, I call them those four waves or the big trends. And they are driving shift that we're seeing across all our customers when it comes to development. We can see that there are four big ways which are fundamentally altering how enterprise application development and automation is done. So each one of these changes alone is not really disruptive, but compound together, just like four waves, they build on each other and take a huge difference and make a huge difference for all our customers and how they think about automation and development. And the first aspect is just a change in workforce. Uh, the so, sorry, Ahmed, to interrupt you, your slides are not moving. Sorry. Oh, my slides are not moving. That's what I love about uh, <laughs> live presentations. Everything works when you know your dry runs. And when you come to the, that specific live, the gods of the live presentation uh, starts and trigger and hits you at that moment. Let me reshare my screen and tell me, guys, if you see it. Do you see it now? Yep. Oh, perfect. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, sir. You're most welcome. Thank you, Ashraf. Ah, it would have been fun for me talking about so many subjects with different with the same slide. Uh, so the first aspect I was talking about is the first wave, which is changing workforce. And uh, we're not seeing a huge, we've seen a huge shift in this demographics of typical employees with the super majority of them being millennials in Generation Z for the next five years. This population has high expectation when it comes to enterprise application and enterprise automation, and also are more willing to roll up their sleeves and try out those self-service solutions and try to create the value for themselves, which where we see the low code is super useful for them. And that really pushes me to the next wave, which is the surge of digital demand. And I think all of you here are, are experiences in this because just I, I want to take a moment to take and digest this number. We, the next five years, we will build uh, more than 500 million applications, more than the last 40 years. Demand for mobile application and enterprise is growing five times faster than the supply. So we can always play in catch up. And 85% of the organization cannot analyze their unstructured data. So the need for a digital solution has never been higher. Finally, this is a number that actually really impacted me when the analysts shared it with me, is that finally, all the, if we take all the information work of an officer and all the processes up to date in all company, 50% of them can be automated with current technology. So if there's just somebody to do the automation, there's a massive opportunity out there for digital transformation and an uh, and efficiency improvement that our customers are struggling to meet. So in reality, not only do we have a surge in demand, but we have an app uh, automation and bot gap, but not enough developers to fill that gap. So despite this unprecedented demand, there's simply not enough developers to implement these solutions. So what I call the third wave, over 86% of organization struggle to hire developers. And it's gonna get worse in a few years. And just the US alone is projected to have a 1 million developer shortage in the coming decade. So, and it, it, it hits primarily non-technology companies. Finally, last but not least, it's the year 2020, the economical dirt, uh, downturn. In 2020, we faced this fourth wave, what uh, the World Bank calls as the great lockdown. It applies to COVID-19 and the travel restriction, the economical impact, Canada's GDP contracted around 6%, globally 5.2%, and more than 40% of all employees are now working from home. Uh, in one of the worst recession since World War II. 
And there's a fundamental shift of how we operate and work. While we are now doing, we had the Global Power Platform Bootcamp last year face to face, and today we have it virtually. And we're going to adapt to more a more hybrid model. So what are the tools that can be leveraged? And the answer is not to teach everyone code. It's if you look, it's not also go and hire and train more than 15 million coders uh, and developers. Instead, the answer is to turn everyone to a low-code developer. And that's what we focus on Microsoft with the Power Platform, with Power Automate and Power Apps. That's why we think it is important that the Canadian companies can go change how they do development and automation to get more efficient in challenging times like this. That's because low code empowers everyone to go faster. Whatever their role, whatever your business user, an IT admin, or a pro developer, you can use the Power Platform to automate tasks, go build uh, application experiences, and our modern information worker will go even further by turning his experience and knowledge to technology added value for its company and contribute to its growth. So he will need to be able to do lightweight development and automation uh, and, uh, and not by writing code. So this is what I've been talking about for the last few minutes, which is our power platform. Sorry. Power platform is what we're talking about. To go make the difference with our customers when it comes to low code development. Power BI, everybody knows it, is our low code to explore and analyze data. Power Apps is a great way to build application, web and mobile application. Power Automate is, a, I would say, a fantastic low code workflow automation, bringing RPA or robotic process automation to companies to remove the burden of repetitive tasks and unlock the productivity of automation. Finally, Power Virtual Agents is our low code to do chatbots and chat agents. And that was something that was inaccessible to a lot of companies. Now with the low code, they can spin up a chatbot agent as easy as building uh, a PowerPoint with it, uh, or a presentation for a couple of days. Uh, but I would say the biggest uh, uh, thing at the core of the platform is that it's built in the cloud. It's only ever been a cloud service. It's important for total cost of ownership, uh, authoring, and building out the solution because it's built on the cloud. It's easy to get started. It's easy to scale and adopt. And it's really easy to manage and govern at scale. So the COE that we, the COE or Center of Excellence kit that we give, the guidance that we help the IT managers, not only in this digital transformation, not having a shadow IT, but contributing as the chaperones of their citizen developers, their pro developers, when it comes to local development. And typically, we have a, what we call the triple loop framework, which is a closed loop system that help users gain insights from data, analyze, uh, drive intelligent business via apps that they build, act, and process uh, processes they can automate with Power Automate. So Power BI, Power Apps, and Power Automate comes as this combined circle that keeps on creating value. And at its core is our dataverse, our enterprise grade uh, data store. We call it common data service. We, the new name is data, uh, Dataverse for those applications that generate data not designed for legacy systems. And Power BI and Power Automate have that deep root uh, connection to Dataverse, making it easy to get even more value from the data store there. Extended Power Platform more, to more than 400 connectors. Uh, either Microsoft or outside of Microsoft to leverage those investment and create more productivity faster. I always joke with my colleagues, if, if there's a system out there, Microsoft uh, uh, Power Platform has a connector for it or can build one with Azure API and deploy it. So you tell me what is different now with the low-code app development? Well, it's now there's this proliferation and explosion of API cloud services. 
that could be leveraged to integrate uh, with automation without having to write any code or without having the necessary UI automation. So take the RPA vendors of 10 years ago. They were only focused on UI or use uh, automation. And now the next vendors of the 10 years to be the next RPA vendors of the next 10 years, they're going to need to mix that API ability and with the UI automation to respond to modern challenges. But last but not least, all the customers that want to bring AI and BI to their business, they need to be able to run workflow and automation and get, go and give support outside of the box. So this is something that you guys all are familiar with. Every company has an IT landscape. And I choose this one because it has to be diverse. Today, there's no one cloud provider or one IT landscape. And everyone works, has something they like. They have a bunch of different systems, business application, productivity application, human processes, and a whole bunch more. And you want to automate and improve your business processes, correct? But with, I would say, with different systems comes a lot of problems that are associated with it. So you have your business application data is incredibly siloed in a bunch of different systems. You have instructed data from, for example, from Office, other productivity softwares, which is difficult to get value and interact from. And just finally, human-based uh, processes that don't work out of the box. Uh, the solution can come with Power Platform. And this is where we think Power Platform is uniquely positioned to address all of these problems. Take the example, RPA and data connectors for more than 400 systems can make it so you can link and integrate any part of your or, uh, enterprise or organization. Where it makes sense, you can uh, use API automation. Where it makes sense, you can use UI automation. And what makes sense, you can use AI with AI Builder to, under, uh, to understand unstructured content. And a big part of the story is also the experience you deliver. Most importantly, the experience you deliver internally and externally. And so being able to match uh, Power Apps and Power Automate together help us create uh, efficient solution that are impacted most of our customers and just some statistics like 86 percent of the fortune 500 country uh, companies use power apps and 97 percent of the fortune 500 use power platform so the importance here is i want to really talk about some great examples and uh, there is a great story that uh that is about T-Mobile, where they got to improve their business processes, start to transform all different aspects of how they operate. And if you look how they have done and built this with Power Apps, building uh, mobile apps for the retail store and spending them in a couple of days, uh, as well as Power Automate to go and automate workflows to roll out new plans, even more when T-Mobile acquired Sprint Sprint had its own legacy system to manage its project, while T-Mobile had its own. So how would, would, would they need this acquisition and not invest millions of dollars to actually bundle, install the, the acquisition and how the, the business they created with T-Mobile together and using Power Automate, they created a process where they could bundle uh, the, two, the two, I would say, combination of, 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 of systems and run the business while they built uh, a third party application that uh, brings the two groups. And I want to share one of these great stories that is told not no better than our CEO, Satya Nadella, who, where I'm going to play a clip for you guys rapidly to see some of the stuff that they. Is awesome. oh. In early March, T Mobile had a massive challenge at their hands. It was designated as an essential business, so the company needed a way to keep a fifth of its stores completely staffed while prioritizing its employees' health and keeping them informed. 
In just $48, two T-Mobile business analysts, Greg Soto and Matt McDermott, built an app with Power Apps and did all of that. Their app let T-Mobile employees share their work status, including if they were available to work and willing to work. Managers could see who was already working in a store and who was working remotely and who was willing to work, but didn't have a physical store to work in. And use all that information to do that complex reallocation of staff. The solution allowed T-Mobile to keep retail associates employed, keep their customers, including the very important first responders, connected. In early March, T-Mobile had a massive challenge. So, before, there's something I want to finish with. And, uh, what I want to share with you is the potential social impact through low code and what it means uh, for age in one companies, but also for the country. There is, there's, I wanted to share some of the data that I really found really relevant is, as you can see here, typically during a recession, we've seen more and more jobs that are being lost due to automation. And what's uh, unfortunate is that this is happening to folks in this orange line. Uh, on that diagram, people that aren't high skilled, creative positions are losing their job faster than anybody else. And during a recession, it only accelerates greatly. If you look back at the recession, for example, in 2019, this is a tremendous drop. So if you go look to where there isn't automation impact, it's around the high cognitive jobs. That's the blue line. That sounds like programming, and we see this uh, played out there now in this pandemic. So like when we hit, we got hit by the pandemics, most of the jobs, while people were losing a lot of jobs, most of the jobs that were actually uh, advertised uh, at high salaries uh, in the Canadian market and worldwide was developers. We need of a developer, in need of uh, in need somebody that can help us really accelerate our digital transformation. So that's what we Sorry. So this is the, the what we call the grow a great lockdown, the projection of jobs in the next five years. There's 140 million new jobs being created around technology and around digital solutions. This is the blue line we've been talking about. This is a group that is getting more opportunities, uh, despite the fact that we are in a worldwide recession in the middle of a pandemic. And what we've seen in the past is the digitization and automation benefiting only individuals skilled and technology uh, and technology companies and everybody else was left behind. So this is historic. This is what happens because we are in a code first world. But what we're seeing is that the local can change it all. It can change it all, not only for the Canadian market, but for worldwide. It's taken every person that has a set of skills, a set of experience, and I'm gonna give an example at the end, uh, a set of experience that has been deep roots in his company to actually take it and transform it to uh, valuable added value for their company and have a return on investment for everyone. So this is a paradigm shift. We are seeing we are at the edge of a revolution with the low no code as we go further. and. It's, we're teaching our children code now in schools and everything, but we don't have that time to actually bring everyone to that language. And believe me, things that are coming here in the Power Platform that are gonna be announced in Ignite are really gonna be mesmerizing. I have been also mesmerized myself by the what we're gonna announce. And honestly, we're really at the edge of a revolution where everybody can have, I would say, uh, the same, chance, equitable chance to create value and contribute to society and then to the company. So not everybody has the opportunity to participate in the low code development, like we said, but whatever your IT, you're a business user or you're a pro developer and 
why Power Platform has become such a such an amazing, I would say, such an amazing platform for our pro developers is that at the beginning, it was perceived as a platform just to extend. Now it's more perceived as a foundational platform. And if you go to us uh, as Microsoft, most of our SaaS applications are built on the common data service, which is Power Platform's common data model in Azure. As Microsoft, our cloud is interconnected to unlock the high possibilities of productivity for everyone. And as we go through all these transformations, people have to find new careers, to find the new opportunities. And we can use the Power Platform to create new opportunities within the same company. And I had a, I had a slide uh, uh, last year and our CVP showed it all, uh, at Microsoft Ignite, which is the highest job demands for Power Platform roles have grown triple digit growth. Just asking people to that have those skills. It was mostly partners, low uh, non-technology companies that are looking for eventually people with those skills. Uh, and this is something that, for example, SNCF, which is the railway company of France, has done tremendously well. So when the recession hit, a lot of people that their jobs started to be obsolete, they created for them something called the Power Institute within SNCF, which is a school that helps anyone at the risk of losing their job, learn Power Platform, and come back to add value after their years of experience and create. This is called the Power School. And there's a lot of examples around there where we see Power Platform as a platform for enable everyone to be that citizen developers, to give that pro code uh, more time to actually leverage and create value, but finally give the IT the tools to govern and monitor what is happening without having a shadow IT. So with that, I want to share with you some of the events I would advise you to go and, uh, and look for, which is Microsoft Ignite. Microsoft Ignite is our say annual event where we're going to announce some of the most exciting uh, things that are coming in the platform. And believe me, I have been uh, fortunate to have a sneak peek to it. I can tell you, you're going to be mesmerized because it is truly fantastic on the roadmap for where we're going with this product, the investment that we're doing, and how we're bringing added value to each one of the employee and being faithful to our mission of empowering every person and every organization to achieve more. And I really, really advise you to register and see what is coming. Finally, there's something that is I do every month, uh, uh, event called the Microsoft Trading Days Canada. Sorry. It is called the Microsoft Trading Days of Canada, which my, uh, my friend Vivek and Ashraf will share the link in the river. And uh, this event also, uh, I do it, I can ac accommodate up to 2,000 people. Sometimes I do it twice a month. And for everyone that is eager to learn about the Power Platform, this event is a one-in-a-kind one because it, it introduces you to the platform. We have a level 100 introduction on what is Power Platform, what is uh, Power Apps, what is Power Automate, what is Power Virtual Agent, and what is Power BI. So a, a definition of the key component of each platform. And the second part of the training is actually a small hands-on lab where you're going to create your first automation, your first app, and your first dashboard. And your first agent. So it's really cool to see how it's bringing. It's a three hour training that I do every month, French and English, uh, that is upcoming. And what is cool about it is that if you attend the whole three hours, you actually get a voucher from Microsoft uh, of a, I would say, of a, a uh, worth of $99 USD to go and do your fundamental certification for Power Apps, which is PL900. Furthermore, at uh, Q4, which is starting April, I will launch another one for the for our experts that want to do the next level uh, certification, which is PL100 uh, for app makers. It will be the same thing 
a uh, level introductory to power apps, but a more deep dive at intermediate level. And finally, uh, some hands on lab and helping people uh, also grasp the, the, the certification of the app maker. And we will be sharing as well uh, vouchers for doing those certifications. So this is really what trying to do because we're three really tremendous. I, I feel blessed to be uh, at this moment at Microsoft in this technology because I can see the future is low, no code. And what how we're doing as a company is Microsoft and the investment we're doing in people and companies and in our technology is going to revolution the world. Because how we saw with Windows and how Microsoft impact, we're doing it in a sustainable, uh, human way to unlock the potential of everyone. And sometimes I attend some sales, I do some sales uh, calls with my colleagues, and I always say, this platform actually pays for itself because what we see is the return on investments, human return on investment on productivity, human return on investment on on on, on the automated processes actually pays for the product. And the ROI is always tremendous, uh, more, tremendously more than where is the investment. So with that, uh, I want to say thank you uh, for attending this keynote. Uh, and I feel really blessed to share with you my humble perspective of Power Platform. And we have a couple of minutes. I wanted to leave to see if me and my colleagues uh, could uh, answer some questions in the river. Thank you, Ahmed, so much. What a great uh, keynote uh, to kick off this uh, great event with. Thank you so much. It's really yeah. helpful. Thank Very important. I appreciate it. You can uh, unmute and ask question if you have to Ahmad. Okay, if uh, there is no question, I believe our next uh, session is divided into two different uh, rooms. So if you are uh, if you are attending Power App uh, session, then you can remain on this link and uh, whoever is interested in Power BI, they can go to room two. Thank you, Ahmed, so much. Uh, it, it was great presentation, very informative, very detailed. And I think uh, a lot of us can join your uh, uh, session. You have a monthly session, so we'll be adding a link to our uh, uh, chat during uh, like if you in a chat, we'll be putting your link and everything. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And uh, great, uh, great session for the rest of the day. Take care. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ahmed. Hey guys, this is Rez. Um, I'm next, right? One of our team will give a little bit of introduction about you and then you can 